All right, guys. <clears throat> Haven't made a video in a while. Um, I'm going to make a video on uh, the double pumper again. Uh, what I want to show you is uh, how to incorporate your stock fuel lines and only adding one line um, external to the top of the actual uh, um, insert. So, uh, what we're going to do, uh, I pulled this one out of a customer's car and uh, come to find out that they already um, cut uh, the permanent filter that's in the housing out of it. So I'll show you that. And then they already did thread a uh, uh, eighth inch NPT to barb fitting into it to incorporate the stock uh, fuel outlet. This is what he has going on. So they cut off the permanent filter. There it is right there. And he kind of ground that down um, and threaded it. Uh, got an eighth inch NPT and that as you can tell, right there, you can see where that feeds that, and then the pump was on there. What we're gonna end up doing now is we're going to, right where this indent is, right here, I'm gonna kinda grind all this down flush with this, and then we're gonna poke a hole through, and that is going to be uh, where we actually put our STM, uh, uh, bulkhead uh, fuel fitting so we got got those bad boys right there from stm uh, really nice by the way and uh they they're the perfect height or perfect depth uh for uh this kind of situation so uh, i'd imagine he cut off a lot of barbs or i'm not sure if, yeah it looks like he cut off the barbs you can kind of see a cut mark right there because he left a little bit of a step right here so I try not to leave that step I usually go all the way to there but you know it does I mean it is just plastic right there to right there so um, that works out fine um, it's super super short he's got a super short little hose here yeah so and this is a Walbro 450 we're gonna use that <clears throat> that's gonna be his primary and then the secondary pump is going to be a Walbro 450 which I have right here. So here is, actually these ones are black flag and they are exactly the same. They're just a little bit cheaper, but they do flow what you need to flow. Yeah, right there, look at that. All the parts and pieces and I have the install kits because you need the install kit for the bottom here. The, the sock on the bottom comes in the install kit and then they give you a plug, which you don't really need the plug. Uh, it is good to run a sock uh, on uh, the bottoms of these pumps. So if at any point something does, you know, get down into the tank, it will filter it out and it ain't going to get up inside and clog the pump up and stop the pump, you know, because that would suck in the middle of a pole. Pump just instantly stops. You go dead lean. You melt the motor down. <clears throat> As you see clearly, this thing is fairly dark, it's not plugged, but it does pick up material. I mean, she's a little dark. And it's got a little goo right there, I'll get that off. I don't know what that is, but. So, we're, we're doing a dumble pumper system on this um, car that incorporates the EVAP line. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the, at least the double pumper made up and get it prepped and ready to go and we will uh, uh, further uh, the install and I will show you the uh, 5 16 flare fitting not flare but um, I'm sorry crush so it's going to be a 6 a.m. male to 5 16 uh, brass crush uh, fitting and I'll show you that underneath the car attached to the evap line just so you know this this is the siphon side, this is the return side. So the smaller line right here is your return side. Th this, this is your siphon side and this area is where the saddle siphon, the siphon actually happens. So as the fuel is returning, it creates negative pressure and it pulls fuel from the saddle on this side. So FYI, when you're putting these things together, The straight area is the one that 
goes on the return line itself. Just like that. Return, saddle siphon, boom, good to go. It will not matter that it is spraying on there, no big deal. Okay, so there's that part. Now she is double pumping. So now, now we're gonna deal with this guy. Pull these wires out as far as we can. And then we're going to insert our plugs. Since we have four holes, we'll insert a couple plugs here. Remember, silicone gas dissolves silicone. So, unless you get a good, you know, special good silicone, you can actually fill in the back side of this plug and it'll be waterproof. But, I mean, fuel proof. But, this thing is designed to clamp down on these wires as you tighten it. I have an O-ring. You can't really tell, but there is an O-ring underneath there. I put an O-ring on the end of this. It has a little groove in there. Um, I'm not sure if they come with an O-ring or not. This one didn't have one, so I may have used it on another one. So what I just did is I tightened this down so it actually squishes this piece together. And now these wires don't move. These wires don't want to move. Yep, so we're good. All right, now let's stick this bad boy in. Um, it's kind of a special situation because you have to uh, put the, um, the fuel level sensor in and then you put the fuel pump in and then you snap it together when both ends are just starting into the tank. I'll show you. Um, be careful uh, with, uh, you gotta be careful with the ring because it's got a bunch of eight millimeters and stuff. If um, this car looks like it came from uh, a real salty area, coast, um, Utah, stuff like that. Uh, we've got, can't, I don't know if you can see that, but we've got broken, we got broken studs right there and right there. You know, that guy's broken. That one's broken. This one's kind of bent, but it still works. And we got still got three on this side. But you got to be careful with these guys. Do your best to not break them off because this means new fuel tank. There is no replacing this ring or anything like that you got to get a whole new fuel tank so i recommend being very very careful with that all right here we go trust me this is not the easiest thing to do plus this thing got a full tank so let's put that socket first there's that one awesome now put this bad boy in Let's see, it goes like that. Okay, it slides up. It's got a little notchy thing in the back. Slide it up, and boom, snaps on. The ring's gonna be kind of fun. Make sure you get the ring on underneath these two guys first, because once you start setting this thing down in there, it's impossible. And it tends to be impossible any way you look at it. All right, so. <laughs> it's not the funnest thing to do. Okay, now she's set down in there. She's set down in there. Hopefully, got enough freaking bolts that it'll freaking work. And we'll be able to clamp it down tight enough where she don't want to leak when she's got a full tank. Uh, and FYI, this ring centers a certain way. So you got three little, you got a notch right here. You got to line that up with your insert. It's full on directional. And somebody cut the freaking tabs off too. Oh, there it goes, right there. You know, what might be a wise idea is making a notch, a little mark right here, making a mark right here, so you can actually just line this up so everything fits correctly. Okay, these are eight millimeters. So from the looks of it, this one broke the little washer off, I guess. Either that or they had to find one. So, just 
just don't cross thread these you'll regret it okay so the other thing too what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna do the relay trick okay so you're gonna pop this thing off pop this bad boy off all right so here's your power and your ground right so what you want to do is you actually want to cut this back and you want to use this power you, you want to cut it back here though you want to use this power to power your fuel pump with a relay from the battery so the wire will show you when you cut it back over here and you cut it this wire coming in will turn the relay on this wire will be coming from your relay power and this will be supplying the pump from the relay that way you don't get variable voltage to your fuel pump because evos work on variable voltage the ground you can leave the ground and you can also splice into it and you know run it over um usually i just leave the ground no big deal but i'm gonna leave that off for now all right uh, here's your saddle siphon line just reach in there pull it snap snap done boom this kind of a pain in the ass you kind of got to fold it fold the hose and then do not bust this off when you bust this off you are having a bad day yeah you will have a bad day you break that thing off grab that okay so check it out this right here is a 5 16 um, crush, brass crush, to 6 a.m. male. So I sand it off, as you can kind of see right there. Yep, okay, a little bit better. I sanded it nice and smooth so the brass has something to seal to. And this is literally just a, a crush fitting. You know, you throw, you, you put, basically you put this on slide this on and then you put the little crush sleeve in then you put the fitting in screw it all together it crushes down makes a nice seal so this is the other half of the evap line right here I cut it in half right here so um, this line right here see this this is your fuel line do not cut this one this ties in to your actual fuel line your evap line is further over You've got fuel. Fuel is the one closest to the frame rail. Return and then evap. And then the other two are brake lines. So remember, primary fuel, return line, evap line, driver's side of the car closest to the driver, um, driver's door, fuel, return, evap, brake, brake, okay? So don't mess it up. And then also you'll see that line go up, up that direction. And then it follows the tape all the way back to right there. That goes to the carbon canister, which I took out because uh, weight savings. So, but uh, yeah. And then here is my 6 a.m. secondary fuel line and what I'm doing is I have that attached to the top of the tank and I'm about to get a measurement I know it's kind of dark down here need better lighting down below but uh, I'm gonna, gonna run this hose and I run this to a 6 a.m. straight I got the, the light in my mouth 60 inch straight right there so let's get to work on that mind you guys this is the right way to do it the other way to do it would would be if you cut it after this little 90 that's just before it and then you slip the 6 a.m over the top of it and clamp it multiple times you can do that too it's kind of the poor man's way of doing it nothing wrong with that there's my cut now i'm gonna go make the other end all right guys that was uh, a feat on its <laughs> <laughs> it was a heck of a feat to get this done. 
feeding this 6 a.m. line down there is kind of a pain in the butt because there's a lot of lines there. Kind of got to use a pry bar to pry the brake line away from the gas tank to feed the line through. Just want to show you, I, I kind of changed my mind a little bit um, on the routing of the hose on the top uh, to avoid um, dealing with uh, when you pull, the, pull it out, trying to deal with the 6 a.m. line in your way. So check it out. So I routed it this direction and around that way instead of going in between these areas right here i figured this way would be a lot easier to deal with so there's our fitting i had to fish it through that rat nest i have a little extra slack right here it's kind of pushing down on the line i want to uh, bring it up a little bit further so what i do is i'll loosen this fitting up up here up at the top loosen this thing up a little bit and I'll drag some slack around. Come on. There we go. There we go. Now with these fittings, it'll twist this fitting in the actual uh, double pumper, the pump housing. So if you hold the end of it, I know it's dark. Hold the end of it, you can get it good and tight. All right. So that is the back half of our pump. And now we've got our primary and our secondary lines all ran. So up in the engine bay, since uh, we have eliminated the fuel filter, which isn't a bad thing, permanent filter, that's a $400 insert. So I have fuel filter, 8AN in and out. And we're gonna put that in the engine bay once I get the other two fittings that are like that uh, crush fitting I showed you. I got two more coming, and then we're gonna do the Y in the engine bay, put the fuel filter in, uh, shorten up some of those lines that I've got, and boom, fuel system's done. So all I'm waiting on is those fittings. So uh, that's gonna conclude at least this part of it anyway. Subscribe and you know like and comment on our videos and stuff. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. See you guys later.